And I also find it hilarious how Jason Ellis has spoken about it. Jim Cornette has spoken about it. Theo Vaughn has spoken about it. But Brendan hasn't. Brendan has said a peep about this whole thing, right? He's just kind of, you know, just keep on keeping on. And if you're wondering why Brendan hasn't spoke about it, the Fire in the Kids subreddit guys have figured out why. Because it looks like Brendan might have taken the deal that Colin was putting out there. That Colin guy who's the founder of Cast Media essentially has owed, he owes everybody on his, you know, on Cast money. Um, he's ignoring their calls. He's declared bankruptcy. Uh, but he's also announced that he's going to go into partnership with Podcast One to set up some sort of deal. And a Podcast One is meant to IPO soon, right? So there's a possibility of them raising a bunch of money so that he can use that money to pay for everybody he owes, which is not going to happen. There's going to be some people who won't get paid. Like if you're a scammer at that level, you don't just get money and then pay everybody off and walk off into the sunshine or into a sunset. Most likely someone that scams like that is still going to scam people. So I'm sure the people who think they're going to get promised, who think they're going to get money, they're promised, they probably won't get it anyway. Long story short, Colin's now suggesting to some people who are owed money on cast, hey, join me at podcast one. I'm not going to give you any money, but once the sales go through for cast media and we raise a bunch of money on IPO, right, when we go public, I'll then give you the money from that. And Brendan Shaw probably took that deal because if you look on the Fire and the Kids post here and you look at the different shows that Brendan has under the Thick Boy umbrella, look what it says there. Thick Boy Studios, Podcast One. So everybody else ran for the hills. When that Colin Leach guy said, hey, join me at Podcast One. I'll give you a percentage. I'll give you this. I'll give you that. But no money and shit. Brendan is so redacted, he took the fucking deal. <laughs> because he wants to appear successful. He wants to appear like he's made it. He wants to look like a big deal. He doesn't want anyone to know that he's struggling and shit. So he's not even going to admit he's, he's, he's going through this. He's going to call people behind the scenes, but he's not going to make a video about it. He fucking took the deal. Of course he did. You go to the next slide, you've got the the Golden Hour, which is under Thick Boy. That also has the podcast one thing. And then you go into the next deal, the Fire and the Kid, of course, the podcast one thing is there. You know, I just noticed. His face and head is front and centre of all things, isn't it? The Shaw Show, it's got his head, of course. The Golden Hour, he's at the top. And then the Fire and the Kid, he's at the front. He's the biggest one, right? Is that like, oh man, nitpicking. But is that like a, is that like a, is that a clear indication of like how much he thinks of himself and the ego and the narcissism and shit that he's always seems to be in the front and he's very prominent on the logo. Like he's right there, smack bang, you know, forward, you know, the little rinks is illustrations out there in the back, you know, probably um, juggling his nuts in his hand. And then he's here on top of two established comedians. He's right on top of them. And then on the next one, he's got his big head here, taking up 80% of the fucking artwork. <laughs> you gotta love fucking brendan man and if you and but a part of me thinks brendan's also very materialistic and also very money motivated so maybe there's a possibility that brendan took the podcast one deal with a stipulation maybe he was ever able to wrangle a deal with that colin leach guy where he got the deal for podcast one He's got the option to get more money once they go on IPO and they go and, you know, they get sold. But then you also got a cash advance, maybe, maybe like a little bit of money because um, what's his name? Jason Ellis did mention that that guy did offer him offer to pay him back the money if he joined Cast Media. He said, if you don't join Cast Media, you're not going to get the money. So obviously he has money, but he doesn't have any, maybe enough to pay everybody or he's maybe been selective. So clearly I think there might be a solution or there might be a, uh, a scenario here where this Colin Leach guy gave Brendan a little brown envelope allegedly a little sweet a, a little sweetener to get like a little signing on bonus when he joined podcast one and why do I say that because according to the you know Brendan's flipping Instagram he got himself a new car Brendan's got himself a new car right Brendan's got himself a new car and as I said here in the caption I don't pocket watch but how does this guy afford all of this stuff doesn't he have a baby on the way is the truck the new kiddo ride I heard it both ways so he may have got a little brand envelope because it looks like he took delivery of another truck so maybe we're gonna see truck walk part two very soon which would be hilarious right imagine if another story comes out 
from some other random talking about how Brendan allegedly may have offered or you know propositioned him to come back to his flipping truck so he could flipping suck, suck, suck his little winky on the front seat. I wonder if that's a thing. But this is very interesting timing. Just as all this stuff is happening with all the Podcast One stuff and Cast Media, everyone's complaining about money owed. Brendan's talking about money owed. He's talking about this deal with Aaron Rodgers. Then he goes quiet on that. Then he's not talking about being broke anymore. Blah, 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 blah. He starts mentioning cars and shit. And then he's the same guy that said in the summer that he was only going to stay with his kids like be with the kiddos to teach him baseball but you also remember him saying something like oh his kid came back from private school and they were asking his mum, um his you know his wife and him oh where they're gonna go on summer holidays because they go to a fucking private school where that's a conversation imagine honestly that would be scary i don't have kids but imagine having a child that's under 10 years old and they're coming back from school and they're talking to you about their day and they're like saying dad mum, where are we going for summer holidays my friend said he's going to Bora Bora. My friend said he's going to Hawaii. My friend said he's going to Italy, to France. Where are we going for summer holidays? That would scare me so much as a parent because you're like, oh my God, we've got a monster in our hands. They're comparing themselves. You know what I mean? They're, just, they're kind of comparing their, their parents' wealth based on where they're going and stuff. He's going to feel left out. You're going to feel obliged to kind of bend over backwards to make them happy or maybe you're going to disappoint them, whatever it may be. That would fill me with dread. 